Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel Computer Engineering Made Easy and I am Anindita. In this channel, we usually post tutorials on various topics of computer science and engineering. And if you are new to my channel, I will request you to kindly subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you get the notification about any new tutorial that I post. Your subscription doesn't provide me any financial benefit, but it provides me the motivation to continue developing more such tutorials. In this tutorial, we will be discussing about the concepts of abstract data type. Before going into the concepts of an abstract data type, let us first understand what is a data type. In programming, a data type is a classification that specifies which type of value a variable can hold and what type of operation can be applied to it. The operation can be mathematical, relational or logical such that it doesn't cause any error. Examples of data type are int, char, float, etc. In C, there are three different types of data types. The first category is called the primitive data type. This consists of the basic data types that are supported by the C language. They are char, int, float, and void. The second category, that is the derived data type, is a combination of qualifiers along with the primitive data type. Now C supports two types of qualifiers, the size qualifier and the sign qualifier. Depending upon the size qualifier, the size of the primitive data type can be altered as short or long. Similarly, C supports sign qualifiers called signed and unsigned to specify the signed nature of the integer types, that is, whether it can hold negative values or not. Apart from these two categories of data type, C also supports a user-defined data type, which combines the primitive and the derived data types to create a new data type as per the requirement of the user. In order to implement a user-defined data type, C provides concepts of structure, union, and enum. All these data types are used to actually store data in the computer's memory. As an end user, whenever we try to store something in the computer's memory, the first thing that comes up is the mathematical model for the data type. By the mathematical model of the data type, we define the behavior or the semantics of the data type from the perspective of the end user. It specifies the possible values that can be stored in the data type and also the possible set of operations that can be performed on the data type and the behavior of these operations. However, it does not specify how exactly this data type will be stored in the computer's memory. In contrast to the ADT, we have got the concrete data type or the CDT. The CDT is actually concerned about representing the data in the computer's memory and hence it is developed from the perspective of a programmer and not a user. The CDT is what we also call the data structure. So therefore, when we talk of an abstract data type, we are not concerned about how exactly it is going to be implemented in the computer's memory. We are only concerned about what type of data it can hold and what are the various operations that can be performed on it. Coming to the examples of the abstract data type, the first example that we will be discussing is the list data type. A list contains a set of elements which are arranged in a sequential order that may or may not be contiguous in nature. The operations that can be performed on a list are get, insert, remove, remove at, replace, size, is empty, is full, etc. By get, we can get hold of an element from any position of the list. By the insert operation, we should be able to insert any element at any position of the list. By remove operation, we should be able to remove the occurrence of any element in a non-empty list. And by the operation remove at, we should be able to remove an element from a specific position of the list. By replace operation, we should be able to replace any element in the list with another element. By the size operation, we should get the number of elements that are stored in the list. By is empty operation, we should be able to check whether the list is empty or not. And by the is full operation, we should be able to see whether the list is full or not. Similarly, like the list abstract data type, we also have another abstract data type that is called the stack. 
A stack data type contains elements of the same type arranged in a sequential order. However, the operations in a stack take place at a single end that is also known as the top of the stack. The operations that can be performed on a stack are push, pop, peak, size, is empty, is full, etc. By the push operation, we can insert any element at the top of the stack, while by the pop operation, we should be able to remove and return any element that is at the top of the stack, only if the stack is not empty. By the peak operation, we can see what exactly or which element is there in the top of the stack without removing it. And this can only be done if the stack is not empty. By the size operation, we can get hold of the number of elements that are stored in the stack. By is empty, we can check if the stack is empty or not. And by is full, we can check whether the stack is full or not. Like the list and the stack abstract data type, we also have another abstract data type that is called the queue. A queued abstract data type mimics the behavior of a normal queue that we encounter in our everyday life. It contains elements of the same type arranged in a sequential order. However, the operations on a queue take place at both ends. Insertion is done at the end while deletion happens from the front. The operations that can be performed on a queue are NQ, DQ, peak, size, is empty, is full, etc. By the NQ operation, a new element can be inserted at the end of the queue, while by the DQ operation, we can remove and return the first element of the queue if the queue is not empty. By the peak operation, we can return the element that is at the front of the queue without removing it and this operation can only be done if the queue is not empty. By the size operation, we can get hold of the number of elements that are waiting in the queue. By is empty, we can check if the queue is empty or not and by is full, we can check if the queue is full or not. So overall, we can say that the definitions of the abstract data type do not specify how the abstract data types will be represented and how the operations will be carried out. Now, there can be different ways to implement an abstract data type. For example, the list abstract data type can be implemented using arrays or single linked list or double linked list or circular linked list and so on and so forth. Similarly, the stack abstract data type and the queue abstract data type can also be implemented using arrays or linked list. Here, in this case, arrays or linked lists are the different ways by which we can store the abstract data type in the computer's memory. Hence, the arrays or the linked lists are called the concrete data type or the data structures that can be used to implement the operations of the abstract data type in the computer system. If you like my tutorial, please make sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Thank you. See you next time. Till then, bye-bye.